Hi friends, it's Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet and Company, and I just wanted to come to you today and share something with you that is really on my heart, and for a very good reason. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the body of Christ today. I'm seeing everything that's happening all around us in current uh, world news as it relates to bibl biblical end time prophecy. Um, you know, I speak about this so often on, on my wall, on my Facebook page, and all of my media outlets. And I look at the body of Christ today and see that so many are, are filled with wrong teaching, a part of the truth of the Word of God, but not the whole truth. And it just saddens my heart. But you know, I can't stop there. We can't, we can't be saddened unto the point of discouragement and doing nothing to try to change it, nothing to eradicate from the body of Christ all of the false teaching that is out there in this day and hour. You know, people, this is a day and hour when we need the truth the most because Jesus said to us in John chapter 8 that, it is the truth, his word, that that and that alone is going to make us free and keep us free. And to have right understanding, to be able to rightly divide the word of God, to, to discern it rightly. You know, that word, rightly divide, uh, if you really get deep into study in the word of God, you're going to learn that it talks, it, what it's talking about is the people of God not having a beastly mind. Now, if you look at animals, they can't, they can't discern things. And when you get into the Greek and Hebrew of all of that, oh my goodness, it's so in depth. It literally talks about deciphering, digging in, um, to come to an understanding to dissect things and to to really really survey these things so that you come up with right perspective and you can operate in that right perspective and be what the bible says once again you can be made free by right information remember god said in his own word that my people uh, people perish for a lack of knowledge and a lack of understanding. And, and all you're getting, get understanding, right? And we don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, God tells us to acknowledge him, acknowledge what he says. And then he gives us the spirit, the Holy Spirit, to bring enlightenment upon his own word. Why? So that we understand, we rightly divide for what purpose? So that it will benefit us. It will profit us. That's what all of the word of God was given to us for, is to profit us in our lives. Glory to God. He's so good to us. He is so good to us. You know, there are so many people on the earth today who, and always for generations, you know, since the beginning of man, People who misunderstood God, misunderstood, misinterpreted God's intentions, God's thoughts toward the man that he created, okay? And we know that in Jeremiah 29, 11, it's everybody's favorite scripture. God says, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. God has not hidden his thought towards mankind, we just celebrated Easter weekend, or if you want to just say it this way, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He ascended back in, unto the Father, and all of the finished work that he accomplished on the cross there. And when we look at that, you know, all of that, if we don't rightly discern it, it, it will be vanity. It, it, it won't do us the good that Jesus, that the actual work 
accomplished if we don't get in on it through our understanding. So I want to share with you just really quickly, because my experience in the Lord goes back for many years. I grew up in a church that I did not rightly understand the Word of God. I didn't have all of the truth revealed. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. He was there in my life because he's, we're sealed with him in the beginning when we're born again. But many of us don't understand that. And so when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, allowed him, I acknowledged him in my life. And, and he became active in my daily life in guiding, directing, and comforting so much that is written of, about the Holy Spirit in the Word of God that he comes to accomplish in our lives to bring us into the fullness of all that Jesus died to bring to our lives. And um, once I began to operate in this, well then all of my religious upbringing went out the window. It literally went out the window, thank God, because I love the view from this window much better. And so many people don't have this view. And it's a distorted view that they have. It's, it's, it's mixed with lies of religion and religious teaching. And pure and simply, you know, we can't criticize religious teaching because no one is going to be able to teach otherwise unless they're enlightened by the Holy Spirit. And God can do that in anybody in everybody's life who, you know, we never know who's going to get that change in the twinkling of an eye. So don't put people down. Don't criticize them. Pray for them. Um, believe God that he, he can do this, this same work in their lives that he's done in yours. So I want to just take a minute because as I started to say, my experience with uh, healing, you know, in the Lord, uh, deliverance in the Lord. And, you know, we could quote so many scriptures about this. Oh my goodness, the word is just full, full, full of all these scriptures of the benefits uh, in our lives. But I want to take a look with you real quickly at Matthew chapter 10 today. And I want you to know, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background here because first of all, you know, previous chapters, Jesus has spent much time before the disciples revealing the Father to them. How? Through all of these miracle works, through teachings, through teaching them, through that very thing where he expounded. He taught in allegories and in mysteries, and then he would take the disciples aside and speak plainly to them. You see, that's how scripture will be to us if we don't have the interpreter, the Holy Spirit, to interpret it for us, to open our eyes to see the whole truth and nothing but that truth so it can have effect in us. Well, Jesus had been busy about doing all of these mighty works in front of the disciples, okay? And I want to look, again, as I said, at Matthew chapter 10. And knowing full well that, and you can go and, and read this, read Matthew and up to this chapter and see all the mighty works that Jesus has already done in the presence of so many and all of the rebuttal that was coming at him. The religious uh, people of the day were coming against Jesus, okay? And those that wanted to believe these religious people were attacking them, uh, you know, forbidding them really to believe, forbidding the the uh, uh, Jesus, wanting to forbid Jesus from even existing and teaching these kinds of things to people and calling himself the Messiah that the Jews had had knowledge of and were looking for. And so, but a large part of his ministry up to this point is healing, setting people free. Isaiah 61 and Luke 4.18, go read those 
places Jesus was anointed to do these things. And it was the Father who was instructing him in this way. The Holy Spirit was leading him in this way. Jesus said, I don't do anything but what the Father tells me to do it or to say it. So I want to look at verse 27 in chapter 10 of Matthew. And it says here, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Now, this is Jesus. This is Jesus and who we believe, this resurrected Jesus, right? That we just celebrated and I loved it. I told my husband I was so thrilled this past weekend to see, especially on Sunday, all of the people that were on uh, online posting just such powerful things about, you know, their belief in the resurrected Jesus. How powerful a a thing that was on the internet Sunday. It, it lifted me up. It boosted me up. Um, there were churches that reported that they had the greatest crowds this Easter in their services than any other years previous. I say God is doing a work today. God is waking people up, shaking people up, and bringing them to the truth that makes people free. Well, he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them saying, see that no man know about it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. You, you know, if you got your eyes healed, if you were blind and all of a sudden this man, Jesus, touches you and heals you and delivers you, you're going to have a hard time being quiet about it, right? And so verse 32, as they went out, behold, now this is talking about the disciples and Jesus. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. I want you to really hear this. I want you to hear this today. When the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. Here was a man with a physical infirmity. He couldn't talk. But Jesus casts a devil out of him, and then the man speaks freely. What does that tell you? That says a lot to me about some of the physical things that are upon us. Or act, I mean... To me, and I, you know, I can show you scriptures that will tell you, you have to know Jesus came. He shed his blood. Read Isaiah 53. It, for our healing. It was for our healing, for wellness, wholeness, soundness, nothing missing, nothing broken in the word peace that describes us in Christ Jesus. That's our salvation. So here it says, when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never so seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he casts out devils through the prince of devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. God does not send sickness and disease upon your life. I'm fighting something myself, but you know, I have to stand yesterday being so built up, as I said, with all of the wonderful, seeing people so elated over over the Lord and his resurrection and understanding the meaning of that for their personal lives. And at the end of the day, of course, you know, the enemy has to come and hassle with your mind, you know, and he began to do that with me. You know, we're never exempt from that. We're never exempt from that. We have to fight the good fight of faith. We have to cast down vain imaginations. 
And you know, when someone has spoken something over your body, it can box you in. I had a conversation with my precious father-in-law a couple weeks ago, and even my own father at this time dealing with health issues. And you know, we can't just succumb to that. We have to fight the good fight of faith with that. Otherwise, we enter into depression. We, we believe what the doctors say over us. We, we believe that natural report. But you see, we don't. greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The ways of God are not the ways of man. And we have to understand that in the spirit realm or we'll never inherit the things that Jesus, the resurrected one, Christ, the anointed one, came to, to give to us so that we could live in it fully. Well, I'm being attacked in my mind last evening, and all of a sudden I hear the Lord, the Holy Spirit, he's so awesome, and he speaks to me so clearly, and he says to me, Ginger, you have to magnify me, magnify my word. In other words, what does that mean? I have a magnifying glass right over here. If I could reach it, I'd hold it up in front of my eyes for you to see. It means that we do exactly what that magnifying glass does. We make bigger. We make bigger. So we have to make the word of God bigger than our circumstance, bigger than our situation. How do we do that? I have a song the Lord gave me many years ago, and it says, the Lord be lifted up, the Lord be magnified. How do we make him bigger? We lift him up. We lift him up. We lift up his word. We cast down those vain imaginations that try to exalt themselves against what God has told us in his word. We pull those strongholds down before they have a chance to, to have a foothold in our lives. You know, God, through Jesus, paid for our redemption to redeem us back onto that, that state that he originally intended man to live their life in. Adam, yes, the perfect thing, you know, the good thing. God said, he stood back, he said, it is good. And it's still good today because now we have it all in Christ Jesus. But we have to know and understand that. And sometimes there's such a fight, the enemy will come against us. And we have to have that word. It's you know, a lot of people say, well, that's just a crutch. You bet it is. It's a crutch and I'm leaning on it because it's going to hold me up. That word is what holds me up. And I want to be upheld by the word of God. Don't you? Yes. And we have to uphold the word in our lives in order for it to hold us up. Stand, having done all to stand, you continue to stand in what God has spoken to us about. So here we are, and, and so the Pharisees um, are saying that, well, Jesus, you cast out devils through the prince of devils. That doesn't even make sense. And in another portion of scripture, it says, how, you know, a house divided against itself, it can't stand. Demons don't cast demons out. No, you know, they come to take up residence in our lives. You're not going to have a friendly devil come along and try to cast something out. They're going to join. The Bible very clearly teaches that when one comes, they go and get seven more. We cast them out, they go and get seven more and come back and try to, try to influence us again in a greater way. Jesus is the one who comes to redeem us from all of the evil works uh, First John says he, third, third John says he came to destroy the works of the devil in our lives. We have to be able to identify what those works are. So here, I love this that it says that once the Pharisees said, well, you know, he's doing this by the prince of the devils. He's casting these demons out. <laughs> The next verse says that Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease 
among the people. Oh my goodness. You know, in direct contradiction uh, to what the Pharisees were trying to tell the people. Don't listen to him. He casts out demons by the prince of a devil. Are you kidding me? You know, do you think that Jesus didn't have to educate people in his day? And that's what he went about doing. He taught, but then the signs and wonders followed the word and, and performed the very thing that he taught. Oh, it's so powerful. So verse 36 says, but when he saw the multitudes, get this, when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion upon them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And then he says to his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Now, I want you to hear this today. What scriptures actually surround these words? And I, I don't know that I even saw this that clearly until today. Jesus is doing these works and, and they're, they're just coming against him. You know, Jesus is there to tell him, I want you healed. I want you well. I don't want you under demonic oppression. God, my father who sent me, he sent me to release you from these things that don't belong unto mankind. They're from the enemy, the devil himself, the, the liar, the father of lies. God doesn't want these things for his people. Okay. And so Jesus went about teaching this and demonstrating these things. And then he says that he was moved with compassion on these people because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep not having a shepherd. What, he had to teach. He had to make known the truth that would make people free, right? That's what the people were. He had compassion. He, you know, I have compassion when I go to the grocery store, when I go out in public, when I go anywhere, and I see so many people that today in this day who are sick with disease, you know, bent over, you know, obesity. I'm sorry, but it plays such a big role in my mind, my thinking, uh, in people's lives for sickness and disease. We've got to take care of ourselves. And, you know, that... There's food addictions. Well, where do you think those come from? They come because we're not whole inwardly. We're not, we're not whole. We have addictions because we're not made whole yet, you know? And God, Jesus, wants to make us whole. So we're not dependent on things like that that bring destruction to our lives. Oh, it's so deep and so wide and... And, and God wants to lift us out and, and, and redeem us and make us, you know, so that like we're lacking nothing. We're lacking no good thing and that we know the truth and the truth can, can and will make us free. But look at this here because this is right where Jesus says the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into this harvest where there is no shepherd, where the people, I'm having so much compassion. When I go out and I see people like that, I want to set up a platform right there. And I want to, I want to just begin to say, this is what, you know, you're, you're so blind to. I've been so blind to. But Jesus came to set us free from these things. God doesn't want you walking around on crutches. He doesn't want you in wheelchairs. He doesn't want you with blind eyes, deaf ears. He doesn't want these ailments to be upon your body, your physical being. He doesn't want your spirit destroyed. He doesn't want your emotions 
uh, battling and, 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 and going through junk all the time, stuff that, that weighs you down in life and causes you not to be able to experience the life, the life that God created you to actually have, to enjoy, to prosper in. Amen. Now look at this, go to, because we're right now we're going into chapter 10. I'm sorry, we were in chapter 9, Matthew 9. I'm so sorry. We started at Matthew 9, 27, and now we're going to look at chapter 10, verse 1. When he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He sent him forth to do what? To do the very things that he had been doing. The very things that caused his, his heart to be wrenched toward all mankind to see what they lived in. Remember in Hebrews 4, it says, We have a high priest who, who is able to be touched by our infirmities. Oh, that is so powerful touched by our infirmities but he took those things upon his body <laughs> he took those he shed his blood his body was broken like we celebrated yesterday you know friends that's not something you should just celebrate on resurrection sunday it's something god intended fully intended us jesus fully expected this is why he chose to obey the father and lay his very life down to come here from glory to abandon everything that he had to be obedient unto the father even unto the death of the cross why so that we could come to know the truth that he paid the price for all of this this fallen a fruit that came to humanity when we chose something other than God. These things are demonic that come upon our lives. And, and so many Christians today still do not understand this truth. And they live in defeat. Uh, they live not... You know, I don't judge that because you could look at me right now what I'm going through and you could say, well, you live in defeat. No, I don't live in defeat. I will not be defeated. And as I said today on, on Facebook, I am, I am just amazed at how many Christians don't, you know, when I say that to them, it's foreign language unto them. Well, I understand that, and I, but I have compassion. I have compassion on them. Because they don't know this whole truth of God that Jesus said would make men totally free. Oh, thank you, Lord, for yesterday. Thank you for celebration. Thank you for everybody who celebrated you, Jesus. But Jesus wants you partaking and celebrating every day in a real way that you're living out those very things that he paid for you to have he wants you to partake of them you are now made a partaker of the divine nature in christ do you know what that means today my prayer for you today is that something i've said here will spark something in you. You know, I, I have to say this too before I go. Um, you know, through my years of ministry, I've, I've heard so many uh, pastors and teachers, uh, you know, they're, they're searching for coming into this in fullness, being able to go out and lay hands on the sick. Let, let me read something to you here as, we, as you go on. Jesus called the twelve in verses 3 and 4 of chapter 10 of Matthew. But look at verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying this, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, into the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, not yet. 
Um, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And, as, and that changed later. Um, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Uh, cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Now freely give. Oh, freely you have received these things. What? These healings. This cleansing. Cleanse the lepers. Uh, raise the dead. Cast out. Now, you, know, you see, there's so many Christians today who have, they've been born again for years and they've never done any of this. And they're just now wanting to come into this. Oh, my goodness. If we only knew, if we only knew from the very moment that we were born again through Christ, this is the ministry that he would call us to. This is what he would have us to be operating in from the very moment we enter into the kingdom of God by our faith in him and, and the resurrected work. Oh, there's so much that needs to happen in the body of Christ today. But there are those who do know. And they are out there. And they are understanding what Jesus said here. The harvest truly is plenteous. And the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And then they go and teach others and they send them forth to do the work just like Jesus did with the 12 here. There is a vast army out there today who know these truths, who are operating in them and trying to bring this wonderful good news of the gospel of Jesus to people's lives so they can actually experience healing, healing of the mind, healing of emotions, healing from your past, uh, to be made free from, from the, the effects of, of former sin in our lives and to understand that, that we can be forgiven of sin every time we, we sin. We have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus, a mediator. We go to him and we ask, Lord, forgive my sins. It's done. Don't get stuck in a rut. Um, punishing yourself for, for sin and, and sit there and camp in it. You know, I've been there. I've done that. And, uh, it, you know, it, it's to no avail. It's not the plan of God through Christ for our lives. The plan of God for us through Christ Jesus is that we are free, free, free. And he whom the Son makes free is free indeed. Father, I thank you today for my eyes being opened all those years ago. Lord, that I could actually minister and see people healed, delivered, set free in so many ways. And Lord God, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters who are out there, who are in you already, but they don't know these truths, Father. And maybe today, Maybe today, Holy Spirit, let it be the day that their eyes be opened further to see more and more truth that they be made more and more free in you and that they have a great desire. I ask you to plant within them, God, the great desire to be a minister, to be a laborer in this harvest and to do it in the way that you intended, Father God the way that you desire it to be so, Father. And Lord, for anybody out there today who doesn't yet know you as Lord and Savior, the word is nigh you even in your mouth, that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you, for your sins, that he is the resurrection and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come unto the Father but by him. The Bible promises that if you believe that in your heart, confess it with your mouth, 
you shall be saved. And then do what we're talking about here today. Get into the word of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to enlighten the eyes of your understanding, Ephesians 1.18, that you might be able to discern what is that good and perfect will of God for you in Christ Jesus. I love you. I pray that your heart gets stirred up along with mine today so that you'll begin to seek the Father and, and God will send you forth. He'll do that work in you with truth. And, and then the next thing you know, he'll be sending you forth to do these mighty works in his name and set people free. I love you today and I bless you in Jesus name. See you next time right here on Trump Treasures uh, with Ginger Rankin, Izzy Harriet and Company. Bye-bye for now.